Uh, I would like to welcome you all to our 25th Hamusa Colloquium in the Korean Humanities. And uh, this year's colloquium is, as you can see, the title is The Tale of Chunyang, Beyond Korea, Translation, Narrative, and Performance. And I'd like to also thank those of you who participated in the performance yesterday. It was a wonderful performance. Um, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed the translation that was given there. And uh, as it is the focus of our uh, colloquium uh, this year, it's the translation, um, uh, you will be able to uh, listen to uh, different analyses of uh, the translated version of Chunyang Jan um, uh, throughout the 20th century uh, in, that was translated in Chinese, Japanese, uh, English, and French. I recently learned that there's also a Russian version of Chunyang Jan, and uh, it was I, 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 um, if I had known, I, I would have included in the um, colloquium, but I found I found out too late, and it was too late for me to include uh, in the, the paper into this uh, colloquium for this year. Um, so uh, the way uh, we organize this in the morning session, we'll be focusing on East Asia. Um, Chunyang Jan published in East Asia, uh, Korea, Japan, and China, and also North Korea. And then in the afternoon session, we'll be uh, looking at uh, Western language, uh, Chunyang Jan uh, translated into Western languages, English and French. Um, so without further ado, I, uh, well, before that, I would uh, like to uh, thank our our co-sponsors of the colloquium this year, um, the Literature Institute, uh, the Literature Translation Institute of Korea, the Korea Foundation, uh, the Seeger Center for Asian Studies, um, and the Institute for Korean Studies for co-organizing the event. Uh, I would like to uh, thank all our co-sponsors once again, and again, um, our uh, program assistant, and Yang, and all of our student assistants who worked tirelessly to make this event possible this weekend. Uh, without further ado, I would like to ask uh, Professor Yogi Kim Runod um, to give her welcoming remark. And I know, I'm sure most of you here in this room know, already know Professor um, Yogi Kim Runod. I mean, she doesn't need an explanation, but I'll just mention this. She's the founder of this colloquium, and uh, she has been working working tirelessly to promote uh, Korean culture in uh, DC area. And uh, I won't be uh, repeating what's already uh, provided uh, in, the, in the brochure that you received. Uh, all, the, our, all of our speakers' achievements are listed here, so I, I hope you can take a uh, look at them, look at their uh, great accomplishments. Uh, then without further ado, I'll ask uh, Professor Kim Renaud to come and give her a welcome remark. Let's welcome her. Good morning, 안녕하세요. Uh, distinguished speakers, my dear colleagues, students, and friends, I'm most grateful and humbled to be given the honor of opening the 25th Hanmusuk Colloquium in the Korean Humanities. There is a saying, even a little child knows in Korea, which says, tikkal moa tesan, literally meaning, even specks of dust, if accumulated continuously, could form a great mountain. It feels just like yesterday that we started this rather special Korean studies program in the DC metropolitan area, but we have already reached a landmark of a quarter of a century. Why do I say it is a special meeting? First, this is a forum where topics in Korean studies focus on the humanities. We have shown through all these years not only the relevance, but the crucial role of the humanities in providing backgrounds and explanations for all aspects of the current workings of Korean life. Therefore, we have had <coughs> programs such as, I mean, topics we have had include medicine, architecture, 
public diplomacy, and even architecture. In addition to bona fide humanities subjects such as art and literature, and, and in fact, one <coughs> covered <coughs> translation. Second, it is a regularly scheduled academic outreach Korean studies program which honors a literary figure, not some tycoon with lots of money, <laughs> and also a woman, Han Musuk. Third, we have consistently had the best scholars on the particular topic covered from the beginning to today. Furthermore, this colloquium is famous for having the speakers and discussants come highly prepared because we require it. You can tell by the reaction of the invited speakers when we reach out to them. They are always very happy. We have, I don't recall anyone refusing other than they were already committed for something else. Being invited to the colloquium thus has become a clear sign of having been recognized as a major Korean studies scholar. Fourth, our audience is of the highest caliber. This was noted by our invited speakers from the very first meeting we organized. In fact, many can be speakers themselves and in fact have been. Finally, this is an academic meeting, but it has a friendly atmosphere where we try to provide the best possible Korean food within our budget <laughs> to create a positive ambience where people do want to talk and socialize with each other in a dignified and stylish manner. This uh, 25th colloquium is even more special in, in that the topic of translation, which I, as I said, we have already covered, receives a deeper and more scholarly treatment by limiting its discussion to classic Korean love story of Chunya that everyone interested in Korea has heard or will hear about sooner or later. The endearing tale of Chunyang has received many different forms of artistic representations since it has appeared in Korea about four centuries ago. Its origins are uncertain, although at least one scholar, Seol Gyeong Sang, in his book Chunyang Jone Bimil, uh, The Secret of the Tale of Chunyang, uh, published by the Seoul National University Press in 2001, claimed uh, so long ago already to have identified the original author as a young Ban aristocrat called, whose name is Cho Gyeong Nam, born in the 16th century. But the origins of the tale remain pure conjecture, and its actual author is not clearly known. Moreover, the, this dramatic story of pure love, hardship, abuse of power, faithfulness, and eventual joyful reunion and the, uh, the, the victory of the just is such a good vehicle to reflect uh, ever-changing social conditions and it has been reinterpreted and recreated a myriad times in Korea, more than 100 times, and now abroad too. As the tale has caught international attention, as we learn today, more today. Our speakers today are presenting many different angles from which we can view the various interpretations that Chunyang's tale 
has received in different places over time. As we would expect, through these efforts to navigate between faithful and reader-friendly interpretations, other issues emerge, such as how rewriters, including their translators, incorporate their own beliefs and wishes and maybe ignorance, and how they recreate the work to please and also influence the readers and audiences. In this sense, today's papers depart from the usual discussions of the challenges of translation, for instance, how linguistic and cultural matters are difficult to transmit into another language and cultural expressions. This colloquium promises to be exciting, illuminating, and thought-provoking, just as we always hope our HNS colloquium to be. Before we proceed in today's main program, I should like to commend Professor Jis Kim, who talked just before me, who is the main convener of the colloquium series now since my retirement from GW two years ago. Mm -hmm. As many of you know, uh, GW just embarked on a new venture. We have, uh, we have opened a brand new institute for Korean studies at GW and uh, our young colleague has assumed the directorship. So, uh, in spite of our, her very much heavier load now, she has uh, not hesitated to pledge to continue the role. She actually volunteered, uh, and uh, the, the future of the colloquium is bright indeed. With Jesus. <laughs> Yet it seems the more she works, the more energetic she becomes. So <laughs> I am very confident that she will manage it with no problem. Um, in fact, she just finished her sabbatical leave, and she worked actually from Korea. So thank, thank God we have emails and <laughs> cacao talk. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but uh, these, are, I mean, it includes organizing the lovely pansori performance we watched last night. But there are many others without whose support and help Jisoo couldn't have done all of this all by herself. So she has already mentioned our supporters, big organizations such as the Korea Foundation and uh, of course the Academy of Korean Studies and the main units within, within GW they have all continuously supported this as a major academic program. And it doesn't matter how much we get from these other units, but because we do have an endowment fund, uh, the significance of these other supports is that this is a valid and significant program and worthy of their financial support as well as their spiritual ones. So um, we, I mean, Jisoo also has been lucky in a way because uh, we have uh, this brand new institute, so we were able to hire our dear Anne Yang, uh, who, who has been a very efficient and pleasant uh, arm of the institute we, without which we couldn't have so much. And we also have uh, our lovely interns, 
I will not go over all their names. I just actually got their names, but I will um, uh, I will say there are about five of them. So, but finally, ladies and gentlemen, I thank all of you for being here when you could be anywhere else on this Saturday and a beautiful autumn one at that. We are truly touched by your interest, participation, and stimulation. You have made the colloquium what has become today. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Greg Brzezinski, and I'm one of the conveners, and I'm going to be presiding over this first panel, which mostly means I'm going to be introducing people and sitting down and listening. Uh, but let me introduce our first uh, our, our first speaker, uh, Ki Suk Tre. Uh, Ki Suk Tre is associate professor in the Institute of Korean Studies at Yonsei University. She holds a PhD in Korean literature from Yonsei, and her, her main research fields are Korean classical narrative, Korean printed books during, early, during the early modern period, gender studies, and effective studies. Her recent publications include The Meeting of Chonggak in Greek Tragedy, Transcultural and Transhistorical Practice of Korean, Pansori Chonggak, and The Case of Media, which appeared in the Korean Journal, and uh, a number of other publications. I'm not going to uh, read, them, uh, read them all out here. Um, but uh, please join me in welcome, welcoming Professor Ki-Suk Tre. Thank you. 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 Th